Quinn and Williams just got some more respect, but I think we're all asking, show me the money. Well, we get into it. Let's go. And it is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Guardians. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is joining the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gaston and Sycamore, baby, for me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you. Well, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I've, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. What's poppin' everybody? My name is Paul Eston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Make sure you guys slam the like button. Also, hit subscribe down below. And also, if you haven't checked it out, I had an exclusive interview with Dalvin Cook's agent. You can check that out both in the video and live section. If you guys would like to check that out, feel free to do so. That was a fun chat. We got some other big interviews coming up later this week. But let's get into the here and now. And this is actually one of my favorite articles that comes out every year it's actually a series of articles jeremy fowler of espn panels uh scouts coaches players and all the league executives to find out the top 10 at every position heading into the year again this isn't a five-year projection this isn't a you know a lifetime achievement award this is right now who are the best players in the game at a series of positions. So I believe this is the fourth version of it here in 2023. Uh, the Quinn and Williams version was released. Uh, the defensive tackle version, excuse me, uh, was released. And Quinn and Williams was featured on the list. He was number four on the list. We have the full details in our article down below. Feel free to share the comments in the heavy.com comment section to win some cool and fabulous prizes. But uh, well-deserved uh, for Quinn and love it. His highest ranking among the voters was number two. Strangely, among the voters, his lowest ranking was unranked, but they kind of composite all of the rankings together. So they pull all these people and say, hey, rank them one through 10, one through 10, one through 10. And then they add them all up together and then beep, boop, bop, they spit out the ranking, which ultimately Quinnen's at number four. The only three defensive tackles that were in front of him were Jeffrey Simmons of the Tennessee Titans, Chris Jones of the Kansas City Chiefs, and Aaron Donald of the LA Rams. You could make a case that Quinn Williams is straight up number two because there are some uh, criticisms of some of these other players in the list, like Chris Jones. Uh, some AFC executives said that he is not as consistent, uh, that uh, he kind of, for lack of a better word, stat sheet stuffed in certain situations that kind of uh, bluffed up, uh, fluffed up the numbers there for Chris Jones. Jeffrey Simmons, he has never had a double-digit sack season. So he's higher than Quentin Williams, who did it last year. Weird. But the fact of the matter is, is that Quentin's getting the love and respect. Last year, he was an honorable mention on this same list. This year, he's number four overall. I can't really complain about that kind of placement uh, on the list, the 25-year-old superstar. But let's get into it, because while that's all well and good and it's cool, and uh, one NFL scout said this, quote, as good as a defensive tackle that I've studied coming out of Alabama in 2019, he was a young guy who needed time to mature. It took him a while, but now it's clicking and he's still ascending. When he gets paid, I don't think he'll regress. He's as good as any pass rusher out there right now. Great bold words there from an NFL scout, but it leads us into... When's his brother going to get paid for Pete's sake? I think we're all asking about it. I think we're all curious about it. And here's the funky territory we find ourselves in. The Jets have team control. Quinnen is under contract for the fifth-year option coming up here in 2023 at $9.5 The Jets have the franchise tag in the back pocket. Of course, it would. So they, they don't have to do it, but it would behoove them to do it because this is the most hyped up jet season. I would say in history, when you have Aaron Rodgers and the team that they had already with him being dropped on it, I don't know. I think I'm willing to go as far as to say this is the most hyped season ever. So would you want a potential? Again, we keep referencing it. The Roscoe Diner Darrell Revis thing where you have this dark cloud hanging over the team? Probably not. So you have to shell a couple extra 
you know, pennies that you probably wouldn't have otherwise if you, in a normal situation, just flexed your team control on a player, then move the pennies around, man. It's about time the New York Jets paid one of their guys. Now, they haven't done it in a long time because, quite frankly, they haven't been good enough. The players haven't been good enough to warrant those contract conversations, but that's not the case here with Mr. Q, with Mr. Quinn and gosh darn Williams, baby. And I'm excited. He's only 25 years of age. He just hit all these career metrics last year, but there is strong belief that the arrow is pointing up and that the stats will only continue to accumulate. Think about it. Last year was his second year in the system and the talent around him. You added Will McDonald, another first rounder. Other guys are all another year deeper into the system, so they should be better, which should open up more opportunities for Quinn. And plus, the biggest factor of them all, of course, Aaron Rodgers, you're playing with more leads. Quinn and Williams is dynamic pass rushers. You should get more pass rushing reps and opportunities because a lot of offense is played conservatively against the Jets, and that's how you can beat them. You can kind of nickel and dime them down the field, run short passing game, run short passing game, and kind of get after some of the linebackers, and even the occasional deep shot one-on-one -on -one against some of the weaker safeties. So, you know. You won't be able to do that. You won't be able to play that game if Aaron Rodgers scoring points all over the gosh darn barnyard, quite frankly. So that could be a, a reason for the error up. I'm fascinated to see how the situation develops. Training camp, we're on the precipice, quite frankly, of training camp coming around the corner. Uh, a couple of quasi updates, if you even want to call them that. Jeremy Fowler of ESPN joined Get Up earlier this week and said things have been slow on that front. And. But the market's established. That's just the fact of the matter I don't understand. Tom Palacero said there is some expectation of NFL Network also. Uh, he spoke on a good morning football and said that, you know, he would you would expect uh, Quinnen to get the deal done and that it's going to be above the Jeff Simmons number, which, which is $23.5 million. And I think that's kind of obvious. I think no matter what, Quinnen is going to be the second highest paid defensive tackle in football. And the sooner you pay him, the better, because you're going to laugh at this deal in a couple of years because the market's going to continue to change. But they, the Jets have waited for all these other guys to get paid. Dexter Lawrence and, uh, you know, uh, Deron Payne and Jeffrey Simmons, for that matter. And hell, even Ed Oliver. He's not on the same level, but Ed Oliver got the bag. So, you know, it's about time that Quinn gets paid. We need this done before training camp. We don't want this to linger. We don't want the Jets to do one of these kind of situations where, it's the easiest. It's the easiest thing in the world, quite frankly. This is a fast break layup for the Jets. They give him the extension, and we go bananas. I, I I don't think the Jets are hesitating, but I know some fans have brought up the last time the Jets paid a double digit sack artist on the defensive line. That, of course, was Muhammad Wilkerson, and that did not work out well. That seemed to be the layup in the fast break. Uh, where you have this guy who grew up minutes from the Jets facilities and he was just, uh, you know, developing late first rounder that contributed somewhere in the ballpark of 36 and a half sacks, I believe, through his first five years in the league. Jets give him the bag and then he immediately is tardy and doesn't give a flying hoot and all that jazz. And uh, that burned the Jets. Of course, that was a different regime. Same ownership, a different regime. But you can't let the stuff like that in the past burn you. Quinnen is a different player. He was drafted differently. He's just different player in general. You can't just, you know, be f afraid of the past and not be willing to live your life. The Jets need to pay Quinnen Williams. It's just that simple. And hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Like I said, make sure you check out the full article down below with uh, all kinds of interesting key details uh, in all of this. Also, like I said, check out my interview exclusive with Dalvin Cook's agent. We have a lot of big interviews coming up this week. Make sure you don't miss it. The only way you can do that is by liking the video, of course, and hitting subscribe so you never miss any gosh darn content. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.